Joseph's. I'm the Reverend Mother Cassinda Ellis. St. Joseph's is an Episcopal church in the heart of Queens Village with a vibrant community dedicated to putting God's words into action. Our church community is a family that comes together every Sunday for worship and fellowship, which is why I am so happy that you could join us. Thank you, and please continue to follow us on our webpage or on Facebook. Have a blessed day.
because we all got an extra hour of sleep. And so for those who come to the 11 o'clock service, you just, you know, you got to sleep a little bit longer. So here we are, celebrating All Saints. And for those of us who are here on Wednesday, we know that November 1st is actually the Feast of All Saints. And so the church deems the Feast of All Saints so important that if it doesn't fall on the Sunday, they say, say, transpose it to a Sunday service because it's that important. It's important because we not only celebrate the saints above us, but we celebrate the saints below. And who are the saints below? Are you sure? Yes. Okay. So we celebrate the saints above and below, which tells us something about our Christian faith and our Christian life, or mainly in our Christian walk on this earth, that we are called to be saints below. Now, if you reflect on your week, how saintly were you? Very saintly. Some of, some of us are very confident, very saintly. Some of us are saying, well, <laughs> you know, I was telling, the, I, I know, I, 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 most people know that I'm a speed demon, and so I always tell you, I take my collar off in the car, not just because I'm a speed demon, but because I also add some flavor to the conversation while I'm driving. And so I don't want to wear my collar while I'm driving and people look at me and say, but is she have the collar on? <laughs> right? And so in this moment, uh, I, I know consciously that I am Mother Ellis, but when I get into the car, something happens. <laughs> right? And so I know I will have the wherewithal to remove the collar, but, but I'm trying. I, I'm honestly trying to keep that collar on when I get into the car. Because it's a reminder, it's a reminder that you stand for something, right? As Christians, we stand for something. And that's why we celebrate not only the saints above, but the saints below. Because we are called to be Christ-like in the world. And so I wear my collar and I'm trying. It is definitely a reminder. But Jesus, he warns us in the gospel this morning, right? And, and before we get into the gospel, remembering, you know, we're celebrating this whole year to the baptismal covenant, and so we are now on the question, do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Yes. Right? And, and, and some of you have a little hesitated there. Yes, right? Yes. Right. And so, in this morning's gospel lesson, Jesus is saying something to us. He starts out by saying, whatever the Pharisees and scribes are teaching you, do it. Go ahead, because they're sitting on Moses' seat. So they're teaching you about the scriptures and what the scriptures call us to do. But don't do as they do, right? You know that saying, right? There are plenty of people in our lives that teach us something. They always want to tell us a, a nugget of wisdom. If you have a problem, they have an answer. But then you, with their answer, and you look at their lives, and you look at them, and you're like, wait a minute now. <laughs> How are you telling me this when you are living that? Right? So Jesus is recognizing that, that the, it's not that the teaching or the wisdom that they're telling you is incorrect. It's that it's their inability to live out that same teaching that we have to be worried about. This last week, I was at Bible study at another church, and I, I, I hadn't been there in maybe a day or one last week. I didn't go last last week. And so... When I was there, one of the people came in after the Bible study said to me, you know, I, I just want to thank you for your presence. And I was just looking at her like, <laughs> right? And she said, you, sometimes you speak and sometimes you don't speak. But even when you're not speaking, your presence moves me. Mm. Right? And I'm not saying 
that to say, oh, good job, Mother Alice. <laughs> right? But to say that people are watching. Yes. Even when you don't think they are watching you. Even when you think they're focused on, you know, the Bible study. Mm. People are watching. So that how you live your life on earth is more important than me telling you and preaching to you. My character is more important. How we conduct ourselves as saints on earth <coughs> matters. Because we are Christ's hands, eyes, feet, mouth, example to those who are watching us. When we say we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we're saying that we're going to walk the path that he's walking, that he has walked. We're going to, to not only mirror it in the words that we preach, but in the way in which we conduct ourselves, in the way in which we talk to our brothers and sisters, and just the way we are just to be, right? Because when I'm in Bible study, you know, it's, it's not me, and I'm not, the, I'm not the expert in the room at that point in time, and I'm never the expert when we're doing Bible study, by the way. I'm just a fellow Christian on the journey, wanting to learn more, trying to hear God's word in a different way that I might not have heard it elsewhere. Which brings me to my other point, that it, as, as Christians, we are to teach, right? Because that's part of our job. Will you continue to teach? And we say, I will, with God's help. Now, in order to teach, you need to what? Study. Study. You need to learn. As Christians, we're called to be in constant study. That's why he said, there's only one teacher, right? There's only one instructor. There's only one father on this earth. And that we're called to follow the words of God that have been passed down to us from generation to generation. But if we're not stooped in it, if we're not constantly learning, then how can we teach it? How can we go out there and preach it and proclaim it? One of the interesting things that I find with doing baptism for people is that parents will come in and they say, I want my child baptized. And I have no problems with you wanting your child baptized, but I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> oh, well, you know. I said, well, you know what? I don't know you. Where have you been? And why are you baptizing your child? And they'll say, well, my parents are wanting me to do it. I said, well, do you realize that when you baptize your child, you're making promises not to your parent, but to God? Right? And you're promising to teach this child to walk in the full stature of Christ. Amen. How are you going to do that when I don't know you? Not saying that you must be a St. Joseph's member, but you need to be somewhere in church, somewhere learning and growing as an individual. Amen. Because in order for us to teach, we have to learn as we go out there. And so some of you might say, Mother Ellis, you're preaching to the choir. We're here Sunday after Sunday, or maybe every other Sunday. <laughs> so why are you telling us this? Well, the Pharisees and scribes go to the synagogues, right? Mm -hmm. And they preach the word, but they don't live it. Mm -hmm. Don't assume that just because you come to church, you're, you have the check mark mm -hmm. entrance into heaven. Because the devil comes to church too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right? Amen. And the devil quotes scripture too. Amen. Right? Amen. It has to reflect in your character because we are called saints below. And there's a world that needs us to, to proclaim that good news in our lives. Not only with our lips, but with our actions. Mm -hmm. This is All Saints Sunday, and we should celebrate. Mm -hmm. The people above have already finished their race. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more they can do, mm -hmm. except for the fact of the legacy they have left behind. You know, the people who have gone before us have given us some wisdom, have they not? Yes. They've taught us how to be, how to move, how to think. They taught us how not to be, because they didn't always get it right, right? But they finished their race. And I say this because it's like when my 
mother was trying to teach me something and I just refused to learn. I kind of finally understood it when I started teaching other young people. When she used to say, Kasunda, I finished my education. I have my degree. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. right? The people above have finished their race. They've done what they had to do. And so it's up to us, the saints below, to continue to move and to preach and to live out the gospel life until God calls us home. And we too will be saints above. But right now, it's more important about how we live so that maybe one day someone will come up to you and say, you know, I thank you for your presence and you will be confused. <laughs> Right? But you will also know that you have done God's work in this place. Amen. Amen. Amen.